Hello, and in this iRacing video, I'm gonna to try to find what the top three most underrated road courses are on the service. Now, in the last two videos on this topic, we covered the most used and the most popular courses according to usage stats over on simracingstats.com. For this video, I look for courses over the past two years that don't always show up on a season like a Spa or Watkins Glen, nor garner the high participation numbers like in Norschleife or Le Mans. However, these tracks still produce strong average peak participation values, but only show up once or twice a season in a handful of series. Hopefully you might find this information useful in some way, or at the very least, the results interesting. Make sure you let me know what your most underrated tracks are in the comments below. Also, be sure to stay tuned after this initial list for a bonus top three list at the very end. And starting at number three, we go to the UK with Brands Hatch. This iconic English racing circuit located 30 miles southeast of London is a challenging test with multiple fast blind turns, an iconic elevation change in turn one, and this track released in 2009 on iRacing came up six times in 21 and 22. It had an average peak in participation of 107. This track had particularly strong participation in the GT3 series though at 175. At number two in the list, we head to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. This near three mile track released in 2019 on iRacing is of course a pretty well known track as the home of the Spanish Grand Prix and Formula One. However, it only appeared six times in 21 and 22 in the most popular series we're tracking. It has had an average peak participation value of 140 with its peak in GT3, same at 140. And in the open wheel series, the Formula Three, even higher participation at 152. All right, and for the number one track on the list, we head to Belgium. No, not Spa, to Circuit Zolder. Now, this is typically overshadowed by Spa Frankenchamps, but this 2.49 mile, four kilometer, 10 turn track was originally released in I racing way back in 2012. And in the past two years, it has only come up on the schedule five times, three of which was in the open wheel F3 series. But within those five appearances, it had an average peak value of 126. However, the other two times it did show up, GT3 series and Ferrari fixed, had an average peak participation of 168, which kind of put it over Barcelona for me personally on this list. And I do have two honorable mentions to kind of round out a top five. And I'm gonna go with Twin Ring Motigi. Came up four times on the schedule with an average peak of 106. Lastly, Donington Park, which came up five times on the schedule with also a peak of 106 average. And just a quick note before we continue, if you're enjoying this video or find it at all useful, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you wanna go that extra mile, there's also the super thanks and join buttons down below. Looking back at the list from this more analytical approach, it doesn't quite catch some of the personal favorites I think are underrated from my anecdotal perspective. So here are my personal top three underrated tracks. So at number three, I have Phillip Island. This track located down under on the island just off the southern coast near Melbourne, not only offers great ocean views, but also a fast paced 2.76 mile, 4.44 kilometer thrill ride originally released way back in 2010 on the service, does get decent usage on road schedules, coming up nine times in the last two years, but it seems to underperform a bit from the participation side with a peak of only 75. Now, no mistake, this track is not easy, which I think scares off would-be drivers as it tends to punish any off-track mistakes heavily. For example, make sure you bring a bathing suit if you miss the mark on T2 and T3, but it is rewarding once you get it down and I highly recommend it. Now the number two personal underrated track on my list is Detroit Grand Prix at Belle Isle. This 2.35 mile, 3.78 kilometer street circuit built in a park by the Detroit River was released in 2018 on iRacing. It sports a mixed surface, walls substituting for runoff areas, and get quite bumpy to say the least. All this provides a challenging drive and a good change of pace from the typical road course. I've always had good races here it seems, and I think you will too. This one has come up five times across three of our eight series with an average peak of only 79. And at number one, I gotta go with Circuit of Americas, AKA Coda. I'm a bit biased on this one as it's a track not too far from me, but I truly believe it's grossly underplayed in the sense of participation with an average peak figure of only 77. It was released back in 2014 on iRacing. This 
4.42 mile, 5.51 kilometer road course comes off a little too difficult or intimidating for a lot of iRacers. It's certainly a technically challenging course, which can lack a good flow if you're off on your marks over its 20 turns. It also can be a bit too punishing with its off-track penalties in my opinion, which I also think deters participation a bit. However, with all that said, I think once you learn how to attack this course cleanly, it's one of the more rewarding drives around. Well, that will conclude this video, but stay alert for another one in my track guide series, where I plan to look at road courses you might want to avoid if you're on a budget. Feel free to hit me up with some tracks you might think will show up on the list in the comments. So in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you catch that video. And also go check out one of my other most recent videos up in the right hand corner. And until then, safe driving out there, folks.